Okay, so our transmission is sitting out here. Uh, we did get it out last night. If you did watch the video, uh, I'll put a card up. You guys can check that out if you haven't already. So today, it's time to do some more work. Uh, we didn't cut the floor out last night because it was getting late. And my neighbors had people over and they were outside, so I just didn't want to do that. But we're going to go ahead and cut the floor out. So what I mean by that uh, is there is actually... You can see there's a little kind of template for me uh, to cut the, the trans tunnel out. So I need to cut that out because this trans is taller and longer. Um, the factory transmission is 17 inches long, the body to the tail shaft, into the tail shaft, and the Tremec is 24 inches. So it's gonna sit, honestly, it sat, I think, wherever the, so right there is a crease. It's gonna sit a little bit further back from that. So my shifter is gonna be somewhere in this area, and this is exactly where the bench seat sits. So it's gonna be kind of interesting to see how this is gonna work. Um, eventually this truck will be having bucket seats, so that's not an issue there. Um, but temporarily I will have to use the bench seat. So I just kind of want to see where it's going to sit. Um, so we're going to first cut out just this center template, kind of mock the trans up after we get all the new bell housing and stuff on and then work with what we have afterwards and see where we need to cut and uh, how we're going to get the cross member to sit and where everything's going to sit. And then we'll start designing a shifter with the seat in and go from there. So first I'm going to go ahead and start taking this carpet out, expose all my terrible rust. Yikes. <laughs> And then, uh, yeah, we'll go ahead. We're probably going to fix a lot of the rust on this too, but uh, the big part is getting the trans in, so we'll get that in. Okay, I want you guys to keep in mind that I showed you guys the underneath of my truck. I'll do it again. So, underneath my truck. You can see all of that oil that goes all over the place. It even goes in my frame. So what that's from is the tail shaft of the transmission, that outer seal is bad. So like slowly, it kind of like seeps out onto the drive shaft and the drive shaft just flicks it everywhere. So what's going on here is it gets all over the floor and it even gets up here. And the reason it's up like getting inside of the cab is there's one the hole right there and then there's also a rust hole that you're about to see. So the inside of this thing is just gonna be covered in litter of gear oil, which sucks. So start to pull this out some more. Ah, gosh. Oh yeah, this is a Flintstone truck. This is the kind of rust that people see and then they just don't buy a truck because of it. This is bad. But I've driven the truck for three years like this. It's not really life dangering. I can guarantee you that. My foot just kind of like rests in this hole. You can literally see the parking brake. I mean, look at that thing, jeez. So, and then this has all got to come out. Uh, but the good thing is I actually do have an extra floor. I have the entire bottom of a cab out of another truck that we're gonna use, so. I'm gonna pull the rest of this out and get rid of it. I might reuse it just temporarily, just so I have something. But uh, regardless, I'm gonna take this out and just kind of clean the inside of this thing. This is just bad. <laughs> okay, so I got most of everything out. This looks like it's part of. Oh yeah, it's this little. You can see it broke. That's all that is. That's trash. This is little. That's just pee. That's not dirt. That's rust. But this part's all I like, clean. It's just all of this. Oh crap. It's like barely holding together. Gosh. Oh boy. Oh, there's that. That's where my foot rested. So that's a nice big hole. And then we gotta cut this guy out. And then I think cut just like that. And then it'll fit. Alright, so what I did was this is the hump from like a floor shifting truck. And so I put this kind of in where it was. And uh, this is, well, I'm gonna use one of these. I'm not gonna use this one. This one's really beat up. I'm gonna get another one. Um, measured in it's like an inch and a quarter inch and a third in from the edge and so I pretty much just took tape went around it went an inch in, inch and a third in um, and went all the way around it and then I'm gonna cut on this line instead of the seam uh, just a little bit further in and then I can uh, I can fit everything and then so we're gonna cut that and then that'll kind of we'll be able to see everything and then we can mock up the transit I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have to cut something like that um, and then we'll see, but uh, yeah, we're gonna cut this guy out, and get this guy mocked up. Decent angle. All right, now we're gonna pull the bell housing off. Everything should pretty much come off from there. 
and uh, yeah, it should be fun and take forever. I don't even. Oh crap! I forgot my hand pack. That's gonna suck. Whatever. We pulled the start out first too, so. Yeah, that sucker's glazed. Oh no, it's it's cooked. <laughs> Look at the, the clutch is destroyed. Look at this flywheel. It's right here. And then the flywheel is literally oh, glazed yeah. and heat cracked. Yeah, it's pretty bad. It's it's literally like got like a blue hue look to it. This clutch, it's really flat. I'll have the flywheel off in a couple minutes. Yeah, I can actually look at it. Okay, flywheel coming down. I'm gonna walk it off. There it goes. I got it. You got it. Yep. Go. Go. I got it. All right, so I don't know if you guys can tell, but that bell housing is gigantic compared to the factory one. <laughs> yeah, the thing is huge. And it, as you can tell, it doesn't quite fit the best. So we're gonna have to take that passenger header out and then uh, probably pound out the floor a little bit. Uh, but it will fit. <laughs> All right, someone just so this. I need to rotate this guy in my hand. <laughs> Alright guys, so I'm picking this video up. I have I have literally like no idea where I left off in the last video. Um, I think we were just putting the flywheel on um, and that motor backing plate. I think that's all we really got done. And so we stopped because we were pretty much done for the day anyways. But I went and put everything on and it, nothing seemed to line up properly. Uh, so there's a difference between the flywheel and backing plate I have there versus the new flywheel, which is under the truck right now. And uh, this one, which this guy came on this scatter shield, which you can see there's a ton of holes in it to line everything up. Um, there's multiple starter holes and everything along that nature. And so I was kind of worried um, that this wouldn't fit. And the biggest issue that I was having is getting the starter to properly engage with the flywheel um, and work mostly with this sheet right here. Uh, so I went ahead and I put this one on here just to see. For some reason when it was mocked up originally, or everything was already bolted on, nothing seemed like it lined up. Um, but you can see with these two up here are lined up. It looks like this one works. So that one will line the starter up, hopefully, I believe properly. The reason I know this should work is because this the scatter shield and the previous McLeod flywheel was all in a car at one point. You can tell everything's been hooked up before. Um, so I know it works and I know it should hook up. So that's why I'm trying to use this engine backing plate. I believe, I wanna say this is almost, I don't know if it's custom made. It looks completely flat. It just looks like somebody uh, cut the piece out and drilled all the holes. But uh, who knows, it, it probably, to be honest, came with this Lakewood bell housing. The main difference between these two... So if I've got my holes kind of lined up on top. So my problem's right here. Uh, you can see the extra on the bottom, which is supposed to kind of mount with the bottom of this bell housing. Because this bell housing is in... The opening is, I think, an inch and a quarter larger uh, than, say, this one right here. So I believe... Yeah, you can see the starter holes don't quite line up anymore. Let me see if I can move them properly. Up and over, you can see it's gonna wanna, when these two are mostly lined up, it's gonna wanna go for this outside hole, which this backing plate does not match the other bell housing for the reason being that because this bell housing, this flywheel, that backing plate are all for a, a 164 tooth flywheel, uh, which is what the 70s 302s came with, I believe. Uh, that's just what I seem to, to find is the 70s model like this motor came with a 60 164 tooth flywheel the flywheel the mcleod flywheel that i have with the scatter shield and all the other stuff was a 157. those are kind of your two options i believe i could be wrong but those are the two that i've seen and so i have to use uh, the different scatter shield with the different bell housing and the different to work with the different flywheel to make sure the starter made up so that's what i'm kind of working with right now i don't think i have to get a new starter to compensate for that um, I hope not. I don't know. I'm going to bolt up what I have and see how it fits and kind of just go from there. So we'll see. So one thing that I might as well note uh, for those of you guys who don't know is these holes are actually offset. So you can only put them on one way so you can kind of see how this one's perfectly lined up and none of the other ones are. Um, but as I rotate it, there now only one lines up. And 
almost. It's very hard to spin without dropping it and breaking my leg, as you can probably imagine. And now they all line up. So you gotta make sure it's keyed a specific way. So I thought I'd just point that out. So this being the 157 tooth, um, and I'm looking at where these holes are. Uh, you can see they're in, there's another spot for me at least on this backing plate. I don't know if this was custom made or not. Like I said, uh, this could be a factory one that came specific with the Lakewood or someone might've made this. I have absolutely no idea. Um, I bought this over a year ago, so I don't really remember. Uh, but hopefully when we put the actual bell housing on or at least bolt this on I can pull the starter through the back and see where this plate will kind of mock it up So we'll go ahead and we'll bolt this on just kind of temporarily and then pull the starter through the back and see what my teeth engagement looks like right here Oh god Flywheel currently kind of hits the front of the starter which is kind of a problem uh, But I believe when it's all bolted down it won't be an issue um, if it is, it'll make a gnarly noise, um, but I'll probably end up shaving stuff down. Uh, it should work. It's also not even bolted down. Like you can see the gap in between the actual backing plate and this. So, uh, stupid me, I was getting all worried. I totally forgot that these starters have a solenoid that pushes the gear forward uh, to engage the flywheel. I'll go down and take it out and I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. So this should work fine. Uh, I know, I don't know if you guys noticed when I put it in, it everything lines up in terms of the teeth, which is good. So I should be able to use these inner two holes um, and it should line up and I have all new hardware to go around. So these are just all the old hardware just to mock everything up. Um, and I went ahead and I put this driver side header or passenger side header in uh, to see if it cleared with this, with this backing plate. So you can see it touches there, but this is just kind of hung. Um, it'll be about right there, which is where it should be. So it's a good thing. Everything kind of is starting to fit finally, uh, which I'm really happy about. So I should be able to reuse the same starter because the teeth don't look too bad in there. Uh, everyone's probably going to tell me to get a new one anyways, considering I have a new everything else. Uh, I might, I don't know. But uh, we're going to go look at the other flywheel and I'll show you how destroyed the teeth are on the outside of it. So I don't remember if I even showed you guys this flywheel or not, um, but the teeth that go all the way around it, I'm assuming this is the original one because it's got the Ford snap right there. Uh, same with the bell housing behind me, you can kind of see it. Uh, so I'm assuming that this is the original flywheel and you can see as I go around it that uh, some of the teeth have actually been chipped off as I go around. Probably just from being started so many times. There's a good angle, you can kind of see all those teeth from getting engaged so many times. And then the other side I gotta show you guys, this thing is literally glazed. Look at that. And heat cracked all the way around. So I don't know if that was me or if this is just 160,000 miles worth of other people and me. Um, but yeah, look at that. That is just crazy. So this is definitely garbage. And I don't know if I showed the pressure plate either. So this is the old clutch and pressure plate. And the pressure plate is legitimately gouged, like extensively. I don't know if the camera will even do that justice. I mean, but this feels like dirt bike whoops going across it. And the clutch is completely flat and all the way down to these little fasteners all the way around it, the rivets are completely ground down. This thing is done, so. And it's got the original, like a three prong pressure plate. It's kind of weird, um, but yeah. That's garbage, uh, flywheel's garbage, everything else is garbage, but uh, that's where we're doing new stuff. So yeah, got the new bell housing. I don't know if I, I'm all over the place, I'm sorry, but I don't know if I said this already, so I got this new bell housing from American Powertrain. Uh, this is their small block Ford to TKO bell housing. Uh, the stock bell housing, here I'll put it up next to, next to it so you guys can see. So the stock bell housing is six inches tall. This one is seven inches tall, so you can kind of see the height difference. I don't know if you guys can tell. This camera has a fisheye, but this is only six inches tall. This is seven inches to kind of gain that extra little bit for the input shaft of the TKO because it is a little bit longer. So this I got from American Powertrain for I think about $260. It is aluminum, so it's a lot lighter than this one. I can't even move this one. This one's cast iron, I think. Uh, it's really, really heavy. This is a big weight reduction for sure. Um, but yeah, everything should fit nicely now, so I can go ahead and start putting everything back together. So I got new hardware for everything. So I have center force clutch uh, bolts to mount everything down there on the clutch side. These are, I believe, bell housing. The, the bell housing are all different sizes. The top two are the small ones, I believe, and then the other, other two, and then new flywheel bolts to go all the way around. 
uh, ARP stuff. I just wanted to do ARP. I, pr I was told I can reuse the original stuff, but I just wanted to do new stuff anyways. I'd, I'd rather just have new hardware down there than 45 year old hardware. So I went ahead and I picked this up from Summit, got this stuff so we can go ahead and mock it up with new hardware um, and go ahead and put it in. All right, this is like the third time putting this on, probably more than that. got ARP stuff going in so I'm gonna use red Loctite on this I have people have mixed emotions about what you should put on it I don't want this coming off um, so I'm using red I'm not using an excessive amount of red just using enough red I'm gonna torque it to 40 uh, 45 65 and then 85 in increments in a star pattern um, I was told by multiple people to use red if other people oh geez if you, other people have different recommendations I guess that's your own thing this is just what I'm doing this time I hopefully I don't get roast in the comments for it but uh, yeah we're just gonna use a small bit of red just to, as a little bit of helper for all my YouTube and Krispy Kreme videos will be posted sometime I doubt it maybe within the next month I shouted myself out. You're still recording. Really? Yeah, I was like, follow my channel at Krispy Kreme. You don't post anything. And then I was like, new videos probably coming out within the next month or so. Wow, that's impressive. That's a good, that's a high standard for you, dude. Shut up, nigga. There you go, muscle man. Yeah, this would be easier if you worked out with me. Shut up. <laughs> Leave a comment below if Craig should go to the gym. I'll get him a free membership. Uh, cool. Now we can start lining the clutch. Put the clutch on, and by the time Chris gets off work, we'll have a bell housing on the back. And the trans. All right, so I finally can put this back together. So what I realized was I was missing these dowel pins that align the clutch. The kind of clutch I have is a six bolt clutch, and then these little pins will sit in here, and that's what'll align it. And I was originally, I was originally trying to put this thing on, and those were not there, and I could not get it to align. I was taking a caliper and going around every, every, like sixth hole and aligning it by like thousands of an inch and I just could not get it to line up. I was looking all over the place because keep in mind I bought this used, had no idea how it worked and it is a dowel pin clutch so it has to have the dowel pins to work. So I went on Summit and it got a Ford Racing dowel pin kit or for a pressure plate. I wasn't really sure if it was gonna fit. It did fit. I tapped them all in so now they're there and the clutch actually sits on them perfectly. Now that'll align the clutch so I don't have to try to get it myself and get the clutch torqued down and pull the little alignment tool out and then get the bell housing on and then I'll probably close the video out there just because I'm sure this video is longer than it needs to be and afterwards, once I get some more parts, we can put the transmission itself in along with a couple other goodies and probably get the drive shaft made. <laughs> I exposed myself. I don't really care. So by the way, you can put some in the end of that and shove that pipe back in there and plug the whole three. I'm aware. Three times. Shut up. like a glove. All right, so just a little tip from me, what I learned is once these threads are all clean, make sure they're clean. These ones obviously are not, but I'll show you in a second. Um, is what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little bit of anti-seize, which I've got right here, put that just barely on the washer, not the threads, but just the washer itself. So when I'm torquing it down, I, there's no binding between the metal and I can get my torque spec dead on and just a tiny, tiny dab of it, nothing, nothing crazy, and then red Loctite on the threads like usual. Uh, the NSCs will help it from the metal binding and make me get the torque spec correct the first time. It'll be the same all the way around, and the Loctite will hold it from backing out, and it's just on the washer. That's the only thing the NIC goes, sees goes on. I can't stress that enough. So then we're gonna put the red Loctite on, put them all in, torque them all down, should be good to go, so. So we got it in finally, close enough-ish kind of. So now I can pretty much pop the transmission in. Uh, everything after that's 
pretty easy. Um, I just want to keep in mind the reason it took so long is because I'm getting all this stuff together and I'm working with something that I bought used and was in a different car and it was a different setup, it was a hydraulic clutch, it was just all sorts of different stuff um, and I had to get hardware and I'm also learning how all this goes together in the process so sorry if it took long, that's why it took long. So hopefully it goes together pretty smoothly after this, I just got to get the transmission in and the cross member angle kind of matched up, hopefully that'll be pretty simple and the clutch hooked up. Hopefully everything's aligned up front, uh, I hope, I think it is. So. If not, well, it's gonna get pulled out again pretty shortly. It won't be in here for a crazy amount of time because once the crown bit gets done, everything's gonna get pulled apart again anyways. Um, but this was just temporary so I can have a little bit more fun with it than having a three speed. So glad that's in now. So I really hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know what you think down below. Any questions, comments, or concerns, I will try to answer them. And I'll see you guys in the next video. So thanks for watching.